Catching up with Andrew Newfield of Comeback Kid. It is Ned. Andrew, thank you so much for taking some time out, man. Super appreciate it. How you doing, man? What are those? Is that CDs behind you or records? It's pop vinyls, man. Oh, I, oh, it's, it's yeah, shit. I've got some CDs behind me as well, but the yeah. majority no, of no, what no, you no, can no, see... that's toys. That's toy shit, right? Yeah, yeah. That's, yeah, that's I've got a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle back there and all that sort of fun stuff. Do you get nice. into anything like that? Um, not, not. I mean, like, I'm not opposed to it. I just, I just don't know it. Yeah. No, that that that's cool, man. Well, I want to kick things off here, man, by saying 2022 marks 20 years of comeback, kid. Are you guys looking Quite, at doing? Uh, there must have been some kind of like mistake because a lot of people have said that and we actually started in 2000 so it's our 22nd anniversary now there must have been a weird thing with the press i think they 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 didn't pay attention to the details that is like a a so did you do anything for the 20 so in three years we got the 25. yes yeah did you do anything for the 20th Two years we ago, were trying, no, we were, no, we were trying to, but then the pandemic happened. <laughs> oh. Yeah, I was gonna, man, that is super bad timing for you, man. Like, yeah, the pandemic happens on your twenty-year anniversary. Well, we did, we did play uh, twenty twenty in Melbourne on New Year's Eve. Oh hell yeah, that yeah. is awesome, right there. Was that was that a good one? At the Crowbar, shout out Trad and Tyla at the Crowbar. The best fucking metal venue, rock and roll venue of Mel- of Australia, really. Oh, I like that right there, man. Do you All like right, that well, place? It, before we get too much onto the Australian side of things, yeah, I, I have been there. I want to talk about the new album, Heavy Steps, man. It's two years in the making. We're talking about the pandemic kind of getting in the way of Comeback Kid. Did you take that as a good opportunity to really put more work and effort and time into this album or did it delay it any or what was sort of the process of it no that kind of like made kind of made it happen um if we didn't have the pandemic it would have taken longer because we had all these tours planned and stuff so um yeah we sent songs back and forth wrote a record kind of perfect timing because you know we recorded a year ago like we wrote for a year recorded and then here we are a year later. So that's two years of a pandemic. And now we're here with a new record. And I, it seems like we can start touring again soon, like our current tour. You know, so it's going to happen. You guys have been touring a little bit, though, haven't you? It's been we, had a good, we, we had a good six months, but then we got stopped in our tracks by Omicron. Yeah, we got we got COVID. Uh, we're stuck over Christmas um, and our current Euro tour is canceled. But we have shows coming up in March. so. I'm just kind of like trying to like figure out what what I'm going to do until then and like how to kind of just pivot till then. Oh, nice, man. Well, that was one of my questions, like during the pandemic, pro- like during the time of the pandemic, what did you sort of do to keep yourself sane? Was it mainly working on this album or was there anything else that you got into to sort of make yourself get through it a little bit easier? Cause you are no, so dude. used to me. Honestly, dude. This album gave me a purpose and like a hobby during the pandemic. It's like if I I found if I wasn't working on music and music relating things or band related things, which is like business and music, if it wasn't for that, I'd be like kicking it, you know, smoking weed yep. and shit. So like that <laughs> takes up a lot of time. Yeah, for real. So no, oh, I like that right there, man. And I was reading and hopefully the press sort of thing is right with this, but it was back to sort of your roots on the recording process side of things. Is that right? Um, interestingly enough, yeah, we recorded with the guy who recorded our first record, Turn It Around. His name yep. is uh, John Paul Peters. And we recorded a studio called Private Ear in Winnipeg. But we've done a lot of records there. Like we're pretty comfortable with that studio. The reason why we do it there is because uh, we're from there. I live yeah. in Toronto now. There's guys in Vancouver, but there's a member of ours that lives there with kids and stuff like that. So we're going to all just go there and that's just going to make it an easier situation for everybody. Um, and we just record there and like sometimes we write there and it's just kind of like a nice little home base that we can come to. And since we all live in different cities, we just kind of need that home base. It's kind of in the middle of all of us, you know? Yeah, yeah. So, definitely. Um, but then when we recorded, like, we realized early on in the recording session that we weren't going to finish everything um, 
in the one room. So I had to like hire like the studio B and record with like another guy while they were doing the guitars and all the uh, the drums in the other room. So it was all systems go the whole time. Oh man, it's always a fascinating process to see how different bands get these things put together and like if you're all in the same place or whatnot. So that's really cool. Man, the videos are super awesome with this one. First up, how did you get Joe from Gojira to feature on on the song Crossed? We literally just asked. I think uh, Helps. our guitar player <laughs> Stu knows his day-to-day guy. So yeah, just kind of asked and it worked. That's kind of how a lot of things happen for us. It's not really very very thought out unfortunately it just kind of things just work out and we just kind of figure it out along the way so it's all like kind of fly by the seat right yeah yeah no i'm hearing you man it's as easy as just simply asking i like that right there man but obviously he's got the respect there to go out and do it for i you. think i think he uh did it like at his house like on his computer so because we talked about it for a while He's like, I don't really know if I like know Comeback Kid, but I like back what you do. But I had met like that band before, and I thought that they, they knew us because uh, my friend from Devin Townsend's band said, yeah, they, the Gojira guys want to meet you. But I, I thought that, but apparently he didn't know us. So I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> he, d- he still did the song, so who cares? Yeah, that, that's super awesome. And, I love- and I heard a rumor that they want to take us on tour next year. So, you know, can't be announced, but it's a rumor yeah a rumor straight from the uh straight from you man that's as good as it gets for me now the videos man the videos are so awesome no thank you so much for appreciating that shit man oh man the no easy way out video wow are you a horror movie guy or or what's the go there uh that's the uh director's vision that was all them they had they, they had the idea of the the chase and getting kidnapped to play the birthday party on the next video. Yeah. See, I wasn't going to say how it came up in the next video because I didn't want to give it away for anyone who hasn't seen it yet. But if you haven't, it's amazing. It's this big dramatic chase. Then on goes the next one and you're playing at a kid's birthday party. That's fantastic right there. Hilarious. I I love the come back kid. (laughs) It's just come back kid. Dad, come back kid. (laughs) <laughs> uh, so that's all the director you're not a horror movie guy or or, or nothing like that because it's it's very different to your usual sort of style no no we just we just kind of went with it and we don't take ourselves too seriously like we're not gonna like we don't have like really too much of a image to try to front so you know we just had fun with it yeah, no, nah, man. It looked like a, a a bunch of fun. Is there? Do you plan on taking sort of that direction again in the future? I know you've just released a, another one, which had a whole bunch of live footage. But will you sort of go to a more, you know, with like? Did you did you not see like did you not see the the video for Crossed? I saw the video for Crossed. Yeah, I was. So I'm more proud of that one because I kind of like produced that one, and what we did there is we recorded all the shit in front of a green screen and we came up with a little bit of a plan but our drummer wasn't there so like he recorded his parts in vancouver we recorded our parts in quebec then i sent it to my editor in berlin and he did that and then he had an animator do some shit there so like to me that was more of a success than the other videos well, there you go, man. I like that right there. For some reason, me, I guess, because I'm a horror movie guy, that one stood out. But yeah, hats off to you for that one, Andrew. That, that's maybe, awesome. Maybe, maybe because I had more to do with it. Yeah. You know, when you work on something, you probably like like it more, right? Like. Yeah. No, I, definitely, man. Face to fire, though. Bunch of live footage. We we're talking about it before. When you say that it came to a stop because of the COVID, like the the live. Yeah, it literally, it, li- it literally did because, like, dude, all the all that footage is from September last year until now, and then we uh, all got COVID at, at the end of the at the last tour, so we were just like stuck yeah. in like Portland and Seattle. I was stuck in Seattle over Christmas, and uh, like our guitar player and bass player were like stuck in Portland. They like we all we all missed like Christmas with family and all this shit. Like it's yeah. crazy. So, so you, that oh, definitely st- stopped us in our tracks. And then now we have a tour that's canceled. And then our next shows are in March. So, like, let's hope it happens. So, yeah, fingers crossed, man. Like, I, I was watching that footage and 
just crazy because here in Australia, everything's just shut down. Like we, we there was a New Year's Eve show that was kind of cool, but like we, I just keep getting email after email saying this festival's shut down, that festival shut down. So it's kind of feels and looks like you guys are well and truly in front of us when it comes to the live music side of things. It, it feels like that. But then when I see a band like Speed have an awesome show in, in uh, Sydney, that's, that's pretty dope. Have you heard that band before? Nah, man. Who do you they're say like speed? The, yeah, they're from they're from Sydney. They're like the best Australian, new Australian hardcore band. Oh man, I'm gonna have to check them out. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, dude, for that. dude, they they have a lot of like live footage right now that, from like recently. I guess you guys like opened up for like a few like a bit, right? Like for like a few days, kind of thing. <laughs> yeah. Well, right? it did open up and open up for a little bit, but now we're getting everything sort of shut down again, kind of deal. Well, but... they they had a good fucking run, and I, there there's a few shows online that everyone should check out. It's like fucking sick. This oh, is this cool. is the premier new shit in Australia. Oh, there you go, man. And one of my questions upcoming is, do you have any recommendations? So there's something to check out right now. I haven't heard. I'm plead ignorant on that one. Band Speed, definitely check it out. We were talking a little bit about Australia not off air, and you said you've spent quite a bit of time here, which is kind of cool. Do you have any sort of traditions or anything that you have to do when you get out here, man? Traditions? I'm not really one for traditions, but uh, no, man. I mean, you know, I don't mind going to like, I heard Bimbo's isn't a pizza place anymore. I thought I heard that that's gone away. I want to go I to Chapel. I haven't even heard of Bimbo's either. I want to, I want to go to Chapel Street. You know, I want to be yep. in Brunswick. I want to be in St. Kilda. Um, you know, Newtown and Sydney isn't as much in my heart, but uh, it's pretty cool to always come back to. I'm more of a Melbourne boy, I think, and. Uh, I just like I have a lot of love there and like a lot of memories there like over the last like 20 years I would say like I've been going there for a long time and I almost feel like a certain connection to that city more than I do for other cities like in America almost in Canada as well like Melbourne's a really special place for me so yeah and you know I love taking the subway around there like taking the tram around there just like fun to like explore you know yeah, man, I absolutely love that right there because I consider Melbourne my sort of home city as well because I'm a little bit away from it. But that's that's awesome right there. And I, when you're listening off those places, I know them all, man, which is all sorts of awesome. Um, except for the pizza place you were talking about, Bimbo's, did you say? Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm just, I don't know, man. No, you probably, you've already schooled me a couple of times, so it wouldn't surprise me if you're right. Yeah, I, I don't want to like double down on it because I actually don't know. Right <laughs> <laughs> Did you pick up on a good Australian accent while you spent time here? Dude, I always drag like people from Canada that go go to Australia and then like they're there for one year and then like, they come back with Australian accents. It's pretty funny to me. Yeah. I don't have that and I can't even do one. Like you beers. Got you got beers. You know. <laughs> yeah, it's getting. You know what? Better. You know what we. You know what we like. Uh, we laugh at like uh when i was on a plane uh come back it was on tour with silverstein and we were going on new zealand and they're like this guy goes next to me y'all musos i'm like <laughs> yeah yeah we're fucking musos so now like because we've been doing like you were talking about like videos and stuff that we've been doing we're like we're like filmos we're like actos <laughs> musos actos filmos like producers <laughs> Yeah, exactly, man. That's what you have to be to be Australian. Just put O's on the um. D DIY it. means everything O's, like fucking accountos. Yeah. <laughs> Real estateos. See, your nickname would be Ando. Or Gusos. Or oh, Gusos, yeah, exactly, man. Uh, no, I like that right there. It's uh, it's funny that you got bowed up for that because when you first said, "Are you Musos?" I didn't even pick up that you were sort of making well, fun I of us. I feel like saying, a true Muso is going to be wearing a fedora and has an acoustic guitar. Like, yeah, <laughs> it's a singer songwriter. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Oh, man, I love it right there. Well, I just wanted to talk really quickly about uh, Nuclear Blast Records. This is his second album on that label. Is it safe to say that's a, your new home now? I mean, I, no. <laughs> I <don't> know. <laughs> I, um, you know, they're a label that I don't even know, like, who owns it. 
Like they it's sold to a, in Germany, I think it's a it, it's a very much a metal sort of. Out, I work um, with I work with a bunch of great people there, and but they're all over the world, so I don't know where home is. I wouldn't say home. <laughs> <laughs> there's one guy in Germany, then there's someone else in the UK and someone in LA, but like no one ever talks to, you know, it's like, it's crazy. Yeah. You know what yeah. having a label is? It's being able to access things that you can't access yourself. It's like these, like the, they're putting out your record, but like you're able to get a little support and like help in different areas of your like band. Like, like yeah. also, I've done a lot of like interviews like this. That's so sick because someone's setting that up. You know what I mean? Yeah. No, one hundred percent, man. I, I, Guso, I've had a lot of fun on this one, man. I really appreciate you taking time out, and the new album is just fantastic. Is there anything else before I let you go that your fans need to know about Comeback Kid? Will you be back out here to Australia, or is there anything else that we need to know? There's talks about it, you know. We want to play there like early next year. So That'd let's see when uh, your guys can let us in, right? So yeah, it sort of all comes down to that at the moment. And like you were talking about, it opens up, it closes down. So I would have thought by 2022 would be right, but who knows, man? But thank you so much for taking time out. Super appreciate it. Hit these guys up, link tree slash comeback kid. There's a whole bunch of links there to their socials, the new album, of course. But Andrew Goose, thank you so much for taking time out, man. Cheers, man.